One. So my friend Renee was someone I knew in high school, and we stayed close over the next couple of years. She was always kind of a bitch, but in a fun way. She would bend over backwards to help you with something, and I considered her a good friend and someone I could trust. But I would not be posting this story, if that was really true. So she got engaged and I was excited for her. She asked me to be the maid of honor and I said yes. So the plans started and for a while things were fine. I am a very crafty person and when she asked if I could do some stuff to help out with the costs of the wedding and as a gift for her, I said of course. At 21 years old, I had not learned to say no to people I cared about as much as I should. And I took pride in things I could do and liked doing them. This is how things went down. First, she asked if I could help cater the reception with these very elegant fruit, meat, and cheese arrangements I had been making for birthdays, speciality events, etc. I said, sure, if she bought the food in the serving trays. Second, she asked if I could do silk flowers for the bouquet, attendant bouquets, and corsages. I said, yes, of course, if she bought the supplies. Third, she asked if I could plan the bachelorette party, and I said, yes, of course. She said she was going to pay for the supplies and party, etc., and cut me a check for whatever I spent, to just give her the receipts. I was not going to charge her for my time, since that was my gift to her. She gave me her budget, and about half the money up front to get me started. I started with the flowers, and they were so pretty. Her colors were pink, lavender, and ivory. I made sure to get top quality silk flowers and I spent several days making six attendant bouquets, a throwaway bouquet, twelve corsages, and a massive bride's bouquet. I had her come several times for her feedback, she said they were awesome, so I completed them a couple of weeks before the wedding. Then, two days before the wedding, she wanted to change them all. I said I did not have time for that. She said, well, I'm not paying for those. I was like, but you liked them a week ago. I was very upset. I had really put a lot of work into those. She rolled her eyes and said sorry and said they will work. I chalked it up to her stressing before the wedding. The bachelorette party I had planned for Thursday or Friday. The wedding was Sunday. She went along with my plans and approved everything. So when she said that she wanted to change it to the day before the wedding, I was like, you have a 1pm wedding. You do not want to drink the night before. I told her I had booked us bottle service at the hottest club in Denver. I had booked the hotel rooms and booked the strippers. I could not change that. She said forget it, keep the hotel and we will just go to the strip club. I was like I will not get my deposit back for the table and it was going to be too late to change the hotel. I will be charged with my credit card. She said she wanted to do it Saturday night, and started to cry, and said it was her wedding, make it happen. I said, okay, well, you're going to cover the cost of changing it. She said, yes, yes, and to make the changes. The change of plans then puts me in a pinch with the food I was going to make. I was going to spend Saturday making everything, and now I would not have time to do everything, then go out for the party. I had several huge party trays to prepare, and I had not been shopping yet for the food. So, next comes the shit show. Saturday comes and I get up at 3am to go to the 24-hour grocery store. I buy all the food, get home around 5am, start making the food. I work all day until the time I have to start getting ready for the party. I get ready in record time and drive over to her house. She is waiting and so are a few others. We load up in my car and drive to Denver. We check into the hotel and then take a cab to this crappy strip club she wanted to go to. We arrive and the male review was just meh. She starts drinking, we all do, and things seem okay. So about 10pm we head out and go back to our hotel. She brought some dude she met there back with us. She claimed she knew him from someplace. Or whatever. Well, after everyone else went to bed, they hook up. They thought I was asleep in the adjacent room, but I was not and heard everything. I'm so over it at this point and I go to bed. The next morning I drop her off and I rush home to get ready and load my car with flowers and food. I get to the wedding venue and get the food set up and the flowers passed out. I then go see how she's doing. Well, funny thing about drinking before the wedding. 
She was all swelled up and they had to pin the back of her dress closed. Her elaborate hair updo then had to be let down to cover the pins. So on to the ceremony. It was fine. Tacky, but nice. But the reception, well, she said the food trays looked cheap and were not fancy. Yet they were made like I always do and she loved them before. She said she was not going to pay for it. Then it came time to throw the bouquet. She could not find a throwaway bouquet. And one of the attendants gave her theirs to use instead. She said no, she would just throw hers. It was ruined after the tussle for it. She then said, I am not paying for that either. I had had it with her. I pulled her aside and said flat out that she owes me the money. I spent under her budget even. She then said she gave me enough money already. And since everything was crap, that she does not owe me another penny. I told her I would tell her husband about her hooking up with that dude last night. Well, she said he would never believe me and no one else knows so tough. I then go to her mom and tell her mom that I am still owed money for everything. And especially the added expense of having to cancel the table and change the room reservations. Her mother cut me a check right there and I left. Mid of honor my ass. I was the pushover that she used to get what she wanted. No surprise, the check bounced. I cut my losses and cut ties. Her marriage lasted about three years. I have learned to say no since and have done nice things for people who actually appreciate it. 2. This happened eight years ago when I was just a young teen. I love my family, but there's always going to be a few crazy relatives. In my culture, we don't have bridal showers, but the event in this post is sort of similar. It's where we celebrate the bride-to-be while also preparing small gifts to give to guests in the wedding. Examples are candles, cookies, perfume, etc. Wedding planning is the responsibility of the elder in the family. So my grandaunt is in charge of the whole wedding. She is a few years older than my grandfather. Things were going well. The bride, my cousin, was happy. Older cousins were preparing gifts. Me and my younger cousins were playing. And out of nowhere, there was shouting. We look and see my two aunts grabbing and pulling at each other's hair, screaming like banshees. Everyone was confused. My grandaunt was trying to get them to stop fighting. Everyone was trying to stop them. Bride's brother was shouting at them for fighting at a time like this. Angry uncle also joined in the shouting. Here is where it got worse. While screaming, angry uncle suddenly turned around and punched the glass door, punching a hole through it. Me and my younger cousins were the closest to the door. Glass was everywhere. It cut one of my cousin's foot. She screams. That causes my little sister and the other cousins to scream. Suddenly, everyone starts shouting at each other. I grabbed my sister and took the younger girls, the boys rushed out to watch the commotion, to the kitchen. Now I had to calm down seven young hysterical children and make sure my cousin's foot was fine. My little sis was crying and we couldn't find our parents and she was worried they'll get hurt. I was scared but tried to say everyone was fine. Of course, things had to get more messed up. The bride's stepdad went into the kitchen and grabbed a knife while the bride's mother tackled him to stop him. I was 14, so I started screaming and crying at the sight of them struggling with the knife. The girls got more terrified and started crying. We were all huddled in a corner as we watched them. The bride's sister shows up and she guides us to her room. We were all crying and I was worried about my parents. We stayed there while my cousin went to find the other kids so that we're all grouped together. I don't remember how long we were inside that room, maybe almost an hour. The bride came in to check on us. She looked tired. Not upset, just tired. Bride's sister was crying quietly, upset and saying, Why does mom and dad have to fight at a time like this? We were all calmed down. My dad enters the room, looking upset and irritated, told us it was time to leave. Walked out and I see the ambulance in the driveway. My family and I left. A week later I asked mom what happened and she told me, it all happened because of the gifts. Aunt One is from the extended family. She's Grand Aunt's daughter. She asks if we'll be putting perfumes in the gifts, but Grand Aunt says no. Aunt One was annoyed because she had been asked to carry the boxes of perfume in, so she left in a huff, not helping with the gifts. 
Brad Aunt went out for a bit because Brad was asking about something. Aunt Two arrived to help. She saw the boxes of perfumes that Aunt One left and asks the bride's mother if it's for the gift. Bride's mother says yes, not knowing what Grand Aunt had said. Grand Aunt came back with the bride to see that Aunt Two was putting the perfume in the gift bags. She got annoyed, but the bride said that she likes the idea. Grand Aunt lets it slide and they continue. Aunt One come back, done with her tantrum, but she sees them packing the perfume and starts screaming at Grand Aunt and everyone when she was specifically told that the perfumes wouldn't be used. Aunt Two didn't see Aunt One helped earlier, so she starts screaming back at her, which led to the fight. The knife incident was because of the bride's parents. While the aunts were fighting, the bride's dad thought it was a great idea to turn to the bride's mother and insult her, putting the blame on her for ruining the bridal shower. The bride's stepdad got pissed and cursed at the bride's dad. They fought and this led to the bride's stepdad grabbing a knife and traumatizing children. As for my uncle, we don't know. He just has anger issues. In the end, my grandmother fainted from the stress, which is why the ambulance was called. No one got majorly hurt and everyone begrudgingly moved on from that catastrophe. Sometimes I would be alone with my dad and we would bring up how shit went down because of perfume, laughing at how crazy it is. I told my friends this and they have never had something like this happen. And again, no responsible adult would want to traumatize children. 3. My half-sister, Heather, and I never really got along. We are both 24. My father left my mother for her mother when we were born, the same month, 20 days apart. It has always been weird. It doesn't help that Heather's mom hates me and my mom. By extension, Heather and I didn't have the best relationship. She has always tried to one-up me even though we both have a similar economic background. I can't give examples of this, but for the sake of brevity, I won't go into them. So now my fiancé and I got engaged last month and had our engagement party this Saturday. We had planned it originally as a casual, formal event. Nice dresses, but not time going to the Met Gala Ball nice. Or like, we're going to a good restaurant nice. Anyway, my cousin hits me up saying she has to show me something. It was the picture of the dress Heather was going to wear. This dress. Jesus Christ. It can only be described as opulent. It was long and white, strapless with sewn-in crystals, with golden accents. I'm pretty sure it's a wedding dress, but I can't be 100%. This made me really mad, so I decided, fuck that. I started texting people, telling them that there had been a change of plans and that instead of casual formal, I decided to make it a costume party. My mother's side is crazy for Halloween, so they were immediately on board. I told my father via text, and asked for him to relay the message to Heather and her mother, knowing full well that he would forget or leave it for the last minute. Saturday comes along, guests start showing up, most of them in costumes. Some don't have time to get one. We just provided them with fun hats and cheap wigs. Heather, my dad, and her mother come like one hour late. As soon as she notices that everyone was either wearing elaborate costumes or weird accessories, and she didn't stand out, she lost it. Especially when my fiancé came along and told her that her bride dress looked amazing for a cheap costume. She left crying and her mother and my father told me I was being childish, and I could have told Heather myself, and not have asked my father. For those interested, my fiancé was dressed as Bubbles, and I was dressed as Mojo Jojo. My mom and aunts went as Abba. Other memorable costumes were Luffy and Zorro, Ian Malcolm and John Hammond and Jesus. Now, so why did I invite her? It's one of those weird family situations where not inviting them would have been more dramatic. You know when you try pleasing everyone? Plus, I still wanted a relationship with my father, so not inviting Heather and her mom would have made things super difficult and made it so my father would have had to choose. When I kept thinking of it, I noticed that my father wouldn't have chosen me on this scenario, 
which is why I ended up cutting them off. You might think I let her win. No. The point of this is to ruin my half-sister's intention. She wasn't just dressed nicely, as some of you might think. She wore a wedding dress to my engagement party. I'd much rather subvert this whole mess than have her smugly sitting at the table with her wedding dress. 4. I am a 31-year-old male. I do not claim to be a saint. Months ago, my fiancé and I had already sent out invites to our wedding. I received a call from my dad. He asked if my uncle and his three now-adult kids could come to the wedding rather than the reception. I initially said no, as we had met our limit of 40 guests. I thought nothing more of it. A month after dad messaged me to call him. I had finished a long 11-hour shift and knowing I had to be back soon, I rang him. Dad told me that he had rung the venue and arranged for the uncle and kids to attend despite me saying no, but they, however, would leave before the meal and return later. My fiancé and I did not want to have to explain this to guests and knew that making an exception here would lead to others and Dad's family is quite large. I didn't know what to do, so I told Dad I would call him back as this wasn't the first change Dad expressed. I told my fiancé, causing her to break down from the added pressure. I rang Dad as calmly as possible to say he upset me. When I began to explain that my fiancé was upset too, he hung up. My fiancé broke down again, feeling that he was dismissing her feelings. Dad texted, saying he was sorry to have hung up on me as he did not want to say something he may regret later. I was livid, but thought that it was best to not respond for the time as I had nothing nice to say. I received a few messages from Dad which I ignored to prevent escalation. I then, after some time, received a text from my stepmother as Dad was in hospital. She told me to call Dad. I asked her for an update and was told just to call Dad. The next day, my brother, who I've always had a bad relationship with, texted me with what can only be described as a telling off. I respond, minding my language to avoid insults but highlighting a few truths for him about her nan, who has required help for some time now. She has lung disease and is unable to walk even short distances easily. For the last seven years, my fiancé and I have taken it upon ourselves to help with her food shopping and visiting her, as she is all but alone these days. Through COVID-19, my fiancé and I kept her company and ran her about. We do so to this day. My brother does nothing to help and visits her three times a year. After a day, my stepmother texts me asking to speak to Dad. I gave in and called him. The call was cold, but I asked about his health, finding out he had an infection, a far less serious condition than what was originally alluded to. Another day passes and my brother texts me at work, telling me how I am responsible for every argument and that I am lucky my brother, stepmother and Dad care or I would be alone. Dad then texts as if nothing happened. I didn't respond as he didn't care about the upset caused. After some time, my stepmother called, referring to me as a horrid and uncaring person, as I couldn't just forget it, before blaming me all for this and hanging up. Dad immediately called, throwing various names at me for making her cry. He told me he wasn't coming to my fucking wedding, and he doesn't owe me an apology. 5. Background I'm getting married in a couple months to my amazing fiancé. We came from different backgrounds. His parents are really wealthy and educated, in the academic way. Mine, we were always struggling with money. I have no issue with that, nor does my partner. I'm also not ashamed about this. His mother never really liked me, but as far as I know, she never liked any of his girlfriends, simply because they were not good enough for her perfect son. I wasn't too bothered about this since he never listened to her and didn't care for her shenanigans. I ignored all her comments about my appearance, lots of tattoos, our choice to be childless, or selfish and stupid. She always talks about my fiancé's exes, bashes my career choices and all, but as soon as she heard about the engagement and wedding, <laughs> the real fun begins. After much discussion, we decided to get married in a small ceremony with only parents and our witnesses, and 
maybe a couple months later, a garden party for closest friends and family members. Well, she hates the idea. She thinks we should do a big wedding and she's gonna pay for it. Because if we go our way, then someone will be offended. I mean, that was the main reason we decided to go with such a small ceremony. But she just can't wrap her head around the fact that her beloved son will have that kind of wedding. Mind you, we both want this. My main concern is the fact that I'm sure she will bring her family members despite our agreement and wants. She is still talking about it to other members of her family, like we betrayed her. She even said, Well, then I'm going to pay for my own dinner and invite everyone. I mean, go ahead, but this is not going to be at our wedding. I thought that if we go with a small ceremony, the whole idea of big Italian wedding, which we are not, it's just her fantasy, will disappear. I guess I just want to express my feelings somewhere, because sometimes I think that I am the one who's crazy. Now, before anyone suggests, a zero contact policy is not an option at this moment, because we are going to be co-owners or something like that with them, father-in-law and mother-in-law. They are building a huge hotel-like thing, and they will need our help. I mean, we are helping them now, and it's actually an act of selfishness, because we want to live there at some point of our lives. No matter what fiancé says, she is always like that. She won't change. My fiancé says that I should stop telling her about the wedding, and maybe she'll stop. He also always has my back, always protects me from her, and is definitely not a mama's boy. There were multiple conversations about her behavior, but, well... The wedding that we are planning will be in a courthouse, in our county. You need to have witnesses of the wedding. I don't know if there is any other English word for that. And you can, but don't have to, invite others. Our plan is that we will have witnesses, parents from both sides, and that's all. After the ceremony, we wanted to take them for dinner. And that's all. After a couple of months, we will throw a party for our friends. Their main problem is that this is too modest and that we should invite other family members for at least the dinner. We won't, because we want to pay for everything to avoid her control. Also, why we want that kind of wedding? I'm really anxious and have lots of panic attacks. Being in the center of attention is hard for me, and groups of people scare me. She knows that. She just doesn't care. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Stresses and Dresses. Wedding hijinks, number six. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. If you enjoyed the video, then please do boop the like button and share the video with friends and families before you go. Okay, now we have a birthday shout out to do today. And today's shout out goes to Gloria Lucille. This was sent on behalf of George. George wishes you a very happy birthday. And so do I. I hope you're having a great time. Uh, I don't know if you were able to uh, take the the day off work today, uh, but if you're not, uh, make sure you do lots of fun things the next time you relax. And you've got a whole month, as is the rules on Channel Hellfraser here, you have a whole month to celebrate and have good times on your birthday. Lots of cakes and snacks and, and, and nice things to drink. Okay, now I'd like to sing happy birthday, then we might have a question of the day. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Gloria Lucille, happy birthday to you. Alright then, let's move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... Foodstuffs that are overhyped in your opinion. I'll name two, there are more, but I think I'm going to upset people here. I think Oreos are one of the most overrated and unenjoyable wastes of ingredients I've ever tried. And I have tried a number of different kinds. They just taste like burnt yuck to me. That's what they taste like. And another one that's going to upset people. Avocados. I've tried them. No. Just no. I may try them again. It's possible I could do so. I can maybe try it with an egg or something to see if it's different. They're not super expensive, thankfully. Well, not where I live anyway. So I may try them again. But the first that time I tried them, it was just basically, well, I could have just go, you know, cut some grass and put that on toast. 
let me know what some of your least favorite and, in your opinion, most overrated foods are. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.